Hello and welcome to the section on rational exponents and simplifying things with that. Starting this new chapter, we've just gotten off of a lot of factoring and a lot of uh, deep stuff with polynomials and huge big rational exponents. Now, rational expressions. Now we're going to do some exponents. So let's review the rules of exponents that we knew from way, way back that we reviewed from Algebra 1. So if you take something like x squared times x to the fifth, uh, the rule here is that when you multiply, that was the multiplication rule, they add x to the seventh power. That's because there are two x's here, five x's here, all times together you get seven x's. So then there was the x squared to the fifth power. And what did that end up doing? Well, that was x to the tenth power. And this was the power to the power rule. And a lot of power going on there. And then we had, what about x to the fifth over x squared? And this was the subtraction rule, because you had five x's on the top, two x's on the bottom, two of the x's canceled. If you factor, wrote it all out in expanded form, it was factored so they could cancel, which is kind of the same thing as when you had x squared over x to the fifth. If you do that in slow motion, you get x to the third on the bottom. And this is where we came up with the other rule. If you did 2 minus 5 on the top, then x to the negative 3 is 1 over x cubed. So there are two different ways to get here. One of them is seeing that the bottom one will win in subtraction with this rule. And the other one is, hey, that's what a negative exponent must mean. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3, so it must mean a reciprocal. And yes, that's what a negative exponent is. So this was the division rule. And this was the negative exponent rule, which means it flips, which when you flip a fraction, it flips back up to the top. So that would be 1 over x to say the negative cubed power, negative 3 power. It would flip back up to the top and become an x cubed. So 1 over a fraction, because you, when you divide fractions, you flip them, will come back up to the top. And then the last one was the 0 rule, x to the 0 equals uh, one for anything. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to do with rational exponents is find out what they are. So when we have something that says, uh, I don't know, x to the one half power, what in the world does that mean? And the secret lies in looking in the power rule right here. We know that if you take x to the one half and you square it, these two exponents would have to, by this rule, multiply. That means you get x to the 1. That's an x. So squaring x to the 1 half power will get rid of this 1 half exponent. What else does squaring get rid of? Oh, look at this guy. That's right. For all positive numbers x, when you square it and you then uh, square root it and then you square that, they undo each other. Well, will that work with the other things? Yeah, so x to the 1 -third and you cube it, well, that's going to be x to the 1 -third times 3 is 1, which is x. And that's the same thing that happens over here. If you cube root a number uh, and then cube it, they undo each other. They're inverses. And we see that a fractional exponent or rational exponent has to follow all these same rules. Certainly, certainly. But now we know what it means, that if you have a number on the bottom, that is a root. So this would be like a square root, and that would be a cube root. And it can keep going. x to the 1 fourth power to the fourth power, that would be x to the 1 because of this power rule. They multiply. So yes, when you're dividing a fraction, it's going backwards of multiplying. And yeah, so there you go. Multiply. When you divide and you have a fractional exponent, that is a root. So that's x, and we could write it like this the fourth root of x to the fourth. Yeah, they undo each other. And so that's what happens here with the multiplication of exponents. So there we go. Other than that, all these rules are exactly the same. So what does that mean for simplification? Well, instead of a problem like x squared times x to the fifth, you're going to get something like x to the 2 thirds times x to the 5 eighths. And the reason this is so valuable, now you could write this as, oh, that's x squared with a cube root on it. These are the exact same thing. This is called radical notation. That's called rational times uh, the eighth root of x to the fifth. When you see these, you should think, I have no idea how to combine those. 
when you see these written in a fraction form and you know these rules, the natural thought is, wait a second, I know how to add fractions. That's right. Off on your scratch piece of paper, you're like, oh, 2 thirds plus 5 eighths, common denominator, times by 8, times by 8, we get 16 twenty fourths, times by 3, times by 3, that's 15 twenty fourths. That's going to equal x to the 31 twenty fourths power. And that is correct, allowing us to write roots as fractions in exponents allows all of the arithmetic that we know about fractions, add, subtract, multiply, divide, and allow us to combine x's with uh, very, very different exponents. Kind of cool. So if you have something like y to the 7 eighths over y to the negative 3 fifths, something like that, well, this guy would go up to the top. Or you could use a rule and say it's okay, it's y to the 7 eighths minus 3 fifths. Uh, that may take a little bit of work. 7 eighths minus 3 fifths uh, times by 5 and 5, that's 35 fortieths minus times by 8 and 8, and you get 24 fortieths. Uh, this is going to equal y to the. And with a minus a minus there, 35 plus 24 is 59 fortieths. That's a mistake. 11th power, 40th root. Huh. Fascinating. So everything you've ever learned about moving these up and uh, adding when you are multiplying and subtracting when you're dividing, and even this guy, uh, y to the 7 eighths power uh, times z to the 3 fourths power over c to the negative 5 ninths power, all raised to the 0 power. That's right. It equals 1. So that is the first part of rational exponents that you will do. To the boards! Here are some for you to practice on. Go ahead and write these down, pause the video, and then resume when you're ready to see the answers. Put these in your video notebook. And welcome back. So here we have x to the 3 eighths times x to the 3 fourths, and they will just add. So we've got to take 3 eighths plus 3 fourths. Common denominator means we'd have to times each of these by 2. 3 eighths plus 6 eighths, which would be 9 eighths. So this is x to the 9 eighths power. Excellent. Number 2. Uh, let's take this squared in and make sure everything gets squared. So we get 2 squared, which is 4, x to the power to power, that's 2 thirds, y to the 5 eighths squared is y to the 10 eighths, 5 eighths times 2, let's make sure we do that. That's 10 eighths, that's 5 fourths. Yeah, all the arithmetic of fractions we get to use now. So this is to the 5 fourths power over 3 squared, which is 9, x to the 8 fifths power, and y to the, what's negative 1 half times 2? Negative 1. OK, so there we go. This guy's going to go up to the top. And so we have 4 over 9. With the x's, we're going to take x to the 2 thirds minus 8 fifths. So 2 thirds minus 8 fifths is, uh, oh, common denominator, 15ths. So we had times by 5, times by 5, 10 fifteenths minus times by 3, times by 3, uh, 24 fifteenths. So this is x to the negative uh, 50, 10 minus 24, so negative 4, 14 uh, fifteenths. Okay, and then the y has a 5 fourths and a y to the 1. All right, so this guy ends up on the bottom. Oh, 8 fifths was bigger than 2 thirds, so we could have subtracted the other way around and ended up with, let's write this out, 4 over 9, that's x to the 14 fifteenths, and this one is y to the 5 fourths and y to the 1, so 5 fourths plus 1 is 4 fourths, so that's 9 fourths, so y to the 9 fourths. There you go, excellent. Okay, number 3, uh, what does this one do? 2 to the 8 of the 5 eighths and to the 0 power. They were trying to be tricky. Anything to the 0 power is 1. No trick there. All right, this is all straight multiplication. So we're going to have 3 times 5 times 2 is 30. And then x to the, we have 1 
and 2 thirds and 5 fourths. So 1 plus 2 thirds plus 5 fourths. Let's add these two together first. 5 fourths and 2 thirds, well, we'd get, need to get a common denominator of 12. This is 8 twelfths, times by 4 and 4, times by 3 and 3, and we get 15 twelfths. And then this would be 12 twelfths. All righty, common denominators there. So 12 plus 20, pl 12 plus 8 is 20, plus 15 is 35 twelfths. So it's x to the 35 twelfths. Whew, that's good. Okay, let's look at the second part of it. For future reference, let's make sure and write down a final rule, and this is the definition of a fractional exponent. We'll just leave it with a 1 over n. This is the same as the nth root of x. So I'm going to put it over here. This is the root rule that the root can be written as a fractional exponent. Very important here. And why is it so valuable? Well, we're going to use it a lot later on, and particularly you need to become familiar with how it works with numbers. So for example, if we know that uh, 5 squared is 25, then that also means that 25 square rooted, or to the 1 half power, equals 5. And if we know that 2 to the third power is 8, then that means that 8 to the 1 third power is 2. So see how they go back and forth like that? This is the cube root of 8 is 2. Ooh, we better do some more of those. What if we did um, 5 to the 4th power? That is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 625. And that is, well, if you take 625 to the 1 4th power, you equal 5. 4th root of 625. Try some other numbers. 3 to the 5th power. Who knows what that is? Well, it's 243. Knowing this will allow you to do 243 to the 1 fifth power gives you the number 3. These number, these you, we can do by 5 times 5, 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And we can do them from the beginning to the end, kind of like arithmetic. These are much tougher, the ones that come out nicely, to be able to do on your own if you don't know these. For example, if I were to write 343 to the 1 3rd power, this is almost impossible to do if you don't know that 7 to the 3rd power is 343. If you do know this, this is a piece of cake, that's 7. Excellent. So you need to be aware that just like f squares are really common and we used them in factoring and even cubes we used in factoring, let's write down all the squares. We have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, all the way down to 13 squared, 14 squared, and down there. These are the perfect squares. 100 to the 1 half power is 10, 121 to the 1 half power is 11, 144 to the 1 half power is 12, and so on. Well, it becomes important, just like when you learn the multiplication tables to memorize them, we need to know the powers. When we did sum and difference of cubes, we kind of had to know the cubes. So let's write those up as well. So you have them here. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8. That's 2 times 2 times 2. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, so that's 27. 4 cubed would be 16 times 4 is 64. 5 cubed is 125. Uh, 6 cubed is 216. 7 cubed is 343. Uh, 8 cubed is 512. And 9 cubed is 729. And then 10 cubed, 10 times 10 times 10, that's 1,000. We saw those earlier, but it's very good to recognize these numbers. And similarly, there are some fourth powers that you're going to need to know. Uh, 1 to the fourth is 1. 2 to the fourth is 16. Now you should note that 16 is 2 squared squared. So 3 squared is 9. Squared is 81. Uh, 4 to the fourth, 4 squared squared, is 256. So in knowing perfect squares, you ought to get at least, well, there's 15 squared, 16 squared is right there. Okay, and let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 squared to the fourth power is 625. We did that one right there. So we really ought to go all the way up to 25 squared to be able to know that one 
really well. Let's write down, this is uh, 16 squared, this is 17 squared is there, 18 squared, uh, oop, that's uh, 18 squared is 324, 19 squared is 361, and 20 squared is 400. And then skip down to 25 squared, 625. These are really the squares you need to know. And if you know these, then you know those fourth powers as well. And that's as high as you need to go. When you go to fifth powers, uh, then we have uh, 1 to the fifth is 1. 2 to the fifth is this times 2. Uh, 3 to the fifth is that one. And 4 to the fifth is over 1,000. So we don't really go that high. Uh, to the sixth power, we actually go even less. Uh, just that one, and then 2 to the sixth is 64. And then 2 to the seventh, I'll write this one down, is 128. And 2 to the eighth is 256. There you go. So these are all of the powers that we're going to be working with. But we need to know that, yeah, you, you got to get some practice with these. So if you see something like 512 to the one-third power, and you have it right here, 512 to the one-third power, that's 8 cubed, so to the one-third power is 8. But this allows you to do more stuff. Let's do something like 81 to the negative 3 fourths power. We've got to take the fourth root, remember what that is, fourth root, so right here is 81, fourth root would be 3, then we have to take it to this power, cubed, is 27 and what does a negative exponent do? It puts it on the bottom. This is 1 over 27. We better do another one just to make sure you got that because you're going to be able to fill out an exponent monster. So let's try this one. Uh, 243 to the negative 3 fifths power. So you're going to take the fifth root of 243, cube it, and then put it on the bottom. So fifth root of 243 is 3, cubed is 27, so this is also 1 over 27. All right, let's send you to the boards and have you practice a few. To the boards! All right, here's some problems for you to work out. We've given you a little bit of a cheat sheet down here to help you out with those if you haven't memorized them yet. Uh, go ahead and give them a shot and press play when you are ready to resume. All right, let's see how you did. 8 to the 5 thirds power. You've got to find the cube root of 8. So where is that? The cube root of 8 is 2 to the 5th power. So 2 to the 5th power is over there, 32. So cube root, fifth power. There we go. And it kind of looks like this. Um, we are taking uh, 2 cubed is 8, and 2 to the fifth power is, uh, let's write it like that, 2 cubed. So we went cube root down to 2, and then that takes it, fifth powered it up to 32. All right, 16 to the negative 1 fourth. So we've got to do the fourth root of 16. Ah, uh, so that is 2. Ah, to the first power is 2, but it's a negative exponent, so it's 1 half. Good. 32 to the 7 fifths power. 32, fifth root, we're doing a lot of 2's here, uh, is 2 to the 7th power is 128. All right, 729 to the negative 2 thirds power. So we're going to take 729, which is right here, cube root it, so we get 9, squared is 81. But this is a negative exponent, so that puts it on the bottom. 125 to the 2 thirds power, so we've got a cube root 125, so that'll take us there to 5 squared is 25, and it is not on the bottom. There you go. Good luck filling out your own exponent